When I tell people I keep bees in my suburban backyard, they usually respond with, bees? Why on earth would you do that? That is exactly how I reacted when family friends of mine bought a native beehive. Now, I like honey as much as the next person, but not enough to invite swarms of stinging insects to my home. So I decided to find out why increasing numbers of people think it's such a good idea. And I discovered that the answer has nothing to do with honey and everything to do with pollination. Pollination is the act of transferring pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. Basically, it ensures a plant can reproduce by producing good quality fruit and seeds. The majority of plants, including the ones we depend on for food, rely on pollination. For some species, this all occurs on the one plant. Pollen is transferred from the male to the female organs because conveniently they have both, and this is called self-pollination. But for some species, they don't have both the male and the female organs, and so they rely on animals, and specifically insects, to transfer pollen from the male to the female flower, and this is called cross-pollination. The animals and insects involved in cross-pollination are known as pollinators, and they don't go around intentionally seeking to pollinate things. Plants attract them with delicious scents and pollen, and their cross-pollination occurs as a happy accident as they travel from plant to plant foraging for food. It is estimated that 65% of flowering plants rely on insects for pollination, and this number is even higher among crops typically associated with food production. So pollination is incredibly important, not just for our ecosystems, but also for food security across the globe. But there's a problem. Pollinator numbers are decreasing at an alarming rate all over the world. While I didn't like the idea of millions of species becoming extinct, until recently, I hadn't understood what this meant or fully appreciated just how big of an issue it really is. In the face of global warming and melting ice caps, losing insects seemed fairly insignificant. However, tired of never being able to do anything about these enormous global issues, I decided to start small. I did some investigation into native bees and eventually bought my own hive. What I now know is that bees are Australia's unsung heroes. Thanks to bees, which pollinate the majority of our crops, Australia is one of the few countries in the world that is agriculturally self-sufficient, which, for an isolated island continent, is extremely important. Never has this been more evident than during the current coronavirus crisis, where our ability to trade with foreign nations is limited. So far, Australia has avoided catastrophic food shortages because unseen and unthanked, bees were working to pollinate our crops and save us from disaster. Two thirds of our crops are pollinated by European honeybees, which is not a native species. This means that the food security of our country relies on the survival of a single foreign species. So how is said species going in 2020? Well, this is a varroa mite, no bigger than a pinhead and the most devastating honeybee pest in the world. Varroa mites are parasitic bugs that feed off European honeybees and cause the collapse of entire hives. They have decimated honeybee populations all over the globe and are present on every continent except Australia. When varroa mites arrived in New Zealand in the early 2000s, 90% of the local European honeybee population was lost. Australian bee researchers have acknowledged that despite our best efforts, it's unlikely Australia will remain free from varroa. It's coming, we just don't know when. And when this pest arrives, it will be almost impossible to eradicate and is predicted based on statistics from other affected countries to decimate up to 95% of our introduced European honeybee population. If you still aren't concerned, China is a prime example of how damaging pollinator loss can be. A decrease in pollinators has forced some farmers to hand pollinate their crops, every individual flower. Could you imagine pollinating every stalk of wheat in a wheat field? Well, this is what it would take to maintain our wheat industry, which provides essential staples to families every day if European honeybees were to suddenly disappear. Now, you might be wondering why I bought a native beehive if European honeybees pollinate so many of our crops. Well, as it turns out, native bees could be the salvation to our pollinator problem. Australia is home to over 1,700 species of native pollinator, some of which are native bees, which researchers believe to be unaffected by the varroa mite. Furthermore, studies of native pollinators have found that in most cases, they were more effective at pollinating fruit and vegetable crops than the European honeybees were. This is due to their ability to buzz pollinate. 
Basically, they vibrate their bodies at a specific frequency to release the pollen in flowers. Some fruit and vegetables, such as tomato and eggplant, can only be externally pollinated through buzz pollination. A study by Dr. Katja Hogendorn from Adelaide University School of Agriculture found that a native pollinator pollinated a loosened crop 33 times more efficiently than the European honeybees did. And after a global study, Lucas Garibaldi stated that wild insects improve fruit yield twice as much as the European honeybees did. There is no doubt that native bees have enormous potential as our next champion pollinator. Unfortunately, their numbers are dwindling due to intensive farming practices, habitat loss, bushfires and pesticide use. This is where we come in. Helping native bees along starts at home, whether you live suburban or rurally. By buying native beehives and introducing them to your local environment, you will develop the proliferation of wild bee nests, which will pollinate not only backyards, parkland and native plants, but also the wide range of crops grown in Australia. Unfortunately, many people just don't understand how important these species are. And even when they do, they might think that they don't have the space all the time to become the part-time keepers of insects with a notoriously painful sting. Thankfully, native bees are the perfect partners for modern households, and there are so many benefits for keeping them in urban areas. Here are the top five reasons native bees are the most low maintenance, environmentally friendly, and delightful pets you'll ever own. One, they require no work at all. You literally have to do nothing other than buy the hive, choose a spot, and let it go. You'll have to put neither time, money, nor energy into caring for them. They are the ultimate low maintenance pet. Two, they don't sting. Forget white jumpsuits, face masks and gloves, there is no danger around native bees. They aren't as aggressive as honeybees and most importantly, they don't have stingers. Three, they are the pet that never dies. Well, collectively. Bees are constantly renewing their hives and their queens. Four, they can go almost anywhere. It doesn't matter where you live or what your backyard looks like. High rise, townhouse, farm, community garden, school, you name it, and they can live there. On top of this, they are also unobtrusive and unlike many other insects, won't invade your personal space. And five, they will improve the vitality of the local environment and produce small amounts of honey. Plus, they are super friendly, fascinating and cute. So, buy a native beehive like I did, or if you prefer and you're handy with wood, make one, and you will increase the number of essential species pollinating our gardens, parks and crops. You'll reduce the threat of food insecurity and have a cute and friendly pet that makes your garden look good and asks nothing of you in return. Many of you can do this today. All you need to do is look up native beehives and native beekeepers on the net. Hives range in cost and appearance, so you might like to browse around a bit before you make a choice. But the most important thing is to get started. Native pollinators are the way of the future for Australia's agricultural industry. In Australia, we are so incredibly fortunate to have such a diverse native bee population and the ability to put in place safeguards before disaster strikes. How lucky are we to have the rare chance to do something that will make a difference in a world where it is so hard to make change. So go out, buy a native beehive and start singing the praises of the homegrown heroes feeding Australia from your backyard.